with me to the rolling sea while the weather's calm and still. And we'll have some fun and laughter with the adventures of Portland Bill. This is my lighthouse on the Guillemot Rock. And here are my assistants, Ross and Cromarty, busy cleaning and polishing. You know, said Cromarty, I think I'd better give my new fishing rod a polish. I must keep it spick and span. Now, ain't it funny how a small thing like that can start an argument? Ross began to tease Cromarty. <laughs> You'll never catch anything with that. It's got too many gadgets on it. What do you mean? This is high technology. Every one of these gadgets has a use, you know. Uh, well, for example, this rings when the hook's in the water, and this buzzes when it's out. That way you know exactly where your hook is. Yes, and so do the fish! <laughs> and with that, Ross picked up his picture of Captain Biscay. Now here's a real fisherman. Just look at the size of that fish. Oh, it's just a shrimp. You should have seen the one I caught on holiday. It must have been this big. Now, it was at that point that I came in. Oh, dear. Now, what's the matter? You're supposed to be polishing, not arguing. I was just telling Ross about the time I caught a fish. This big. Exaggerated, Cromarty. A salmon, it was. This big. Ah, oh, come off it, Cromarty. You couldn't catch a cold in a thunderstorm. <laughs> Now, I caught a herring off this very lock last week that was, oh, easily this big. Oh, yes, said I. I don't think I saw that one. Um, no, I don't think you did, bluffed Ross. It, it was too big to get in the pan, so I threw it back in the sea. But it was easily this big. Oh, it was, was it? Well, mine was this big. I couldn't stand any more. You two, always bickering over something or other. The only way to stop this argument is to hold a fishing match. We'll see who can catch the biggest fish for tea. Well, that suits me fine, said Cromarty. I'll get the rest of my gear. <laughs> I'll probably catch a whale. Look at King Neptune there. <laughs> oh, you can laugh, Ross. But you'll see. You won't catch a thing with that twig and a bent pin. And still bickering, they went off to their favourite places on the rock. Well, by now, I'd had enough of their arguing, and I decided that the fishing competition had to end in a draw. And for that, I had an idea. When I was out of their sight, I caught hold of both their fishing lines and tied them together. Then I gave Ross's line a tug. I've got one! cried Ross, pulling hard and, of course, tugging Cromarty at the same time. Me too, he shouted. Mine's bigger. Now, after watching them puffing and pulling against each other for about ten minutes, I decided that enough were enough. So I cut the line and they both fell back with a bump. Suffering swordfish, gasped Ross. I'm glad that's over. My fish nearly pulled me into the sea. Aye, and mine broke my line. Well, perhaps you'd better try for smaller fish from now on, I cried. But Cromarty was worried. Uh, we've caught nothing for tea. And I'm hungry. Don't worry, I caught a tin of baked beans. Mmm, makes you hungry, this fishing lark. I could eat another tin of baked beans, said Ross. Oh, well, that's nothing. I could eat another two tins said Cromarty. And a jam sandwich. Blistering barnacles they were at it again. Come on, you two. There's too much polishing to be done to hold an eating match. I'll polish the brasswork until it shines like a new pin, smiled Ross. Mine will shine like two new pins, boasted Cromarty. Now that was one argument I didn't mind them having. <laughs> Oh, come with me to the rolling sea while the weather's calm and still. And we'll have some fun and laughter with the adventures of Portland Bill.